final thing if you are doing worse, but I don't encourage that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I'll show you next time. Uh, so the secret diagram by nature, secret diagram and the Leverage diagram are the same. Um, but we, we just view the same diagram. So we view the same diagram from different uh, angles. So uh, if you want to see how uh, uh, you know how changes impact. You know, uh, some other objects, then you should use the collaboration diagram. Otherwise, you use secret diagram. And uh, for the state chart diagram, we uh, can use state chart diagram and activity diagram. Then, uh, in the last class, we studied that uh, uh, event. So, event is something that happens at a point in time. So, event doesn't take time to complete. So it, it is uh, instant, instantaneous. And also an event sends your information from one object to another. And the events can, uh, can have associations with each other. For example, uh, uh, they are causally related. So one, an event can happen before or after a, uh, another event. Then they can be causally unrelated. So they are independent of each other. So events can be also grouped into uh, the event classes. Then we can have a hierarchy that is event taxonomy. So secret diagram. Secret diagram is a graphical description of the objects participating in a use case using a DAG relationship uh, notation. So what is DAG? Have you finished discrete structure? Now what is DAG? Is directed, what does A represent? Directed acyclic graph. Yeah. So then uh, the heuristic for finding participating objects, you know, an event always has a sender and a receiver. So find them for each use case, uh, for each event. You know, these, these are the objects participating in the use cases. So we have studied this. Uh, use case previously, for example, uh, purchase ticket. So the name is purchase, purchase ticket and participating actor is passenger. And the condition is that uh, you know, the passenger stands in front of ticket distributor and the passenger has sufficient money to purchase the ticket. And the uh, exit condition is that the passenger has the ticket. The flow events, then special requirements and so forth. Then from the flow events, we can derive another UML diagram. Uh, it is so from flow events, we can derive a UML UML uh, diagram. The diagram is secret secret diagram. So we have already studied that. Uh, you know, this line is called what? Lifeline. This is called lifeline. Then. Uh, select zone, inter, uh, insert coins, pick up change, pick up ticket. These are called operations. These are all, you know by nature these are operations, but uh, you know in secret diagrams these are called events. Then uh, just now you, you guys mentioned that uh, these are operations. Then these operations belong to. Ticket machine. Ticket machines, whoever receives the uh, events will own these operations. And uh, what is the visibility of these operations? Public. Public. Very good. Then, uh, in the future, if you see the dashed arrow, it means data flow. Data flow. So then, if you uh, rep uh, represent uh, iteration, then you should use asterisk. 
So now uh, you see we see the dash arrow again. So uh, what does this mean? Data, data flow. Then if we uh, need a condition, you know, if the condition is true, condition is true, then we uh, uh, send the event. All the event happens. If the uh, condition is false, then the event does not occur. Then the event, you know, the condition is put in between the brackets. So if this condition is evaluated to be true, then this uh, event will happen. So then we also studied that uh, uh, the reason, what's the reason that uh, uh, this ticket object is a level lower than change processor? Because it is created later, at this point, this object doesn't exist yet, right? Then if we put uh, uh, X by the end of the uh, lifeline, what does that mean? So it means that uh, uh, this object is destructed. And uh, beyond that point, that object does not uh, available. So that's why we call this dash line as lifeline. So if you, you put an X mark at the end of the discussion, then it means that uh, beyond that point, the object no longer exists. The secrets diagram represent behavior in terms of interactions. So it is useful to identify or find missing objects. So it is time consuming to build, but uh, worth the investment. And it also complements the uh, class there bounds. Okay, so now let's take a, a, take a look at an example. So flow events in, uh, in getting, in get C position use case. So flow events. First, establish connection between smart card and, and uh, onboard computer. Then establish connection between onboard computer and the sensor for C. Then get current seat position and store on smart card. So then, what are the uh, objects? What are the participating objects? Smart card onboard. So smart card and uh, onboard. About the computer, then what else? Subject. Where is the subject? So that is, what are other objects? Sensor for seed, right? Sensor for seed or seed. Yeah, then. So in the first step, you establish connection between smart card and onboard computer. Then we should, uh, we know that the time elapsed from top to bottom. So then we should have smart card as well as for the first. So the, inter the interaction is between smart card and onboard computer. So then we should establish connection. Then Establish connection between onboard computer and the seat, actually a seat sensor, then we should establish connect connection. Then get current current seat position and store on smart card. So and uh and get seat position, then then uh what is next? Good. Okay, then this is called yeah, this is data flow because this is dashed arrow, right? And the uh, result is returned to a smart card. So is that clear? So how we uh, translate a flow event into the corresponding system. So the secret of the heuristic exposed uh, secret algorithm is that you know the first column should be the anchor of the use case. And the second column should be the boundary object. And the third column should be the control object that manages the rest of the use cases. So this is heuristics. You don't have to follow, but if you follow, this is gonna be a very good practice because you know uh, people can easily understand the idea. The first column should be the actor, and the second column should be boundary object, and the third column should be control object. 
then the creation of, of objects, the creation of objects uh, happen at the beginning of event flow by boundary objects. So boundary objects create the control. So the create, uh, control objects are created by boundary objects. And also access of the objects. Entity objects can be accessed by control and boundary. And uh, entity objects, objects should not access boundary or control objects. So later we will study the reason why we do not prefer uh, entity objects to access boundary or control objects. Okay, so this is a sequence diagram. Then does this uh, sequence diagram follow the heuristics? So the first column is actor. actor. Then the second column is boundary, right? Then third column is control. control. And the control is created by mm -hmm. the boundary, right? The control is created by boundary. So now let's assume that, uh, you know, at this modeling stage, we have identified league owner, arena, league, tournament, match, and the player. So this is what we get now. So this is what we get, league owner, league, tournament, match, player. And this is, you know, this is a corresponding sequence, uh, sequence star bomb. Then, by comparing sequence diagram and the class diagram, can you identify a miss, uh, uh, some missing classes? So this is the beauty of sequence diagram. So uh, not only it can uh, provide operations, it can also help us identify missing classes. So this. This is the class diagram we currently have. Then this is the sequence diagram we have already drawn. Then can you identify some missing classes? Arena. Arena. Yes, arena is not there. Okay, very good. So first, we identify one arena. And what else? Tournament control. Tournament control. I know this. Then? What else? That's it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how about tournament boundary? Can you find a uh, tournament boundary from the uh, current class R1? So current, the current class R1 only includes league owner, league, tournament, match, and player, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have tournament boundary. So this is the idea. Uh, the secret R1 can help us identify the uh, missing classes. Then the secret diagram identified uh, additional new classes such as tournament boundary and uh, announcement uh, control. Then in addition to the participating objects, the secret diagram also supplies us with many new events. For example, uh, the new uh, tournament uh, set name, set max player, commit, and so forth. Then we have discussed this question already. So who owns these events? Whoever receives operations. Whoever receives these events, right? Okay. For each object that receives an event, there is a public operation in its associated class. And the name of the operation is usually the name of the event. Okay. So this is our quiz uh, 
in the uh, third circuit, right? So I asked you how many operations does the tournament turn, tournament boundary have? So then we uh, we know the answer is four. Four. That's one, two, three, four. So then, besides identifying the uh, missing object, objects, it can also help us identify the operations. For example, you know, for the uh, tour, tour announced tournament control, we have an uh, additional operation, which is create a tournament. OK, so sequence diagrams are derived from use cases. Then the question is, do we have to uh, draw a sequence diagram for each use case. So we know that for each use case, we can uh, draw a corresponding sequence diagram, right? Then the question is, do we have to draw a sequence diagram for every single use case? The answer is only for interesting, important use cases. Otherwise, we spend a lot of uh, energy and efforts on uh, trivial uh, use cases. So only we only draw sequence diagrams for important use cases. And also the structure of the sequence diagram helps us to determine how decentralized the system is. So we di distinguish two structures for sequence diagrams, namely fog diagram, diagram and the steer diagram. So the uh, dynamic for the fog diagram, the dynamic behavior is placed in a single object. So that is control object. So this con control object knows all other objects and often uses them for direct questions and commands. So you see all the uh, events are sent by this control object. So this is called fork diagram. Then steer diagram is that uh, the dynamic behavior is distributed. So each object delegates some responsibilities. So it's just like steer. Then each object knows only a few of the other objects and knows which objects can help a specific, uh, a specific behavior. So this, you know, by shape, this is like a steer and uh, uh, by shape, this is like a fork. So that's why we know, uh, we call them a fork the diagram and uh, of the structure and the steer uh, structure. Then a question naturally arises, which one is better, fork or steer? Okay, very good. So a safe answer is always depends, right? <laughs> so it depends on what? So it depends on the purpose of the uh, system. So, you know, object-oriented supporters claim that steer structure is better, but not, not necessarily the case. So, if you want to model a de decentralized control structure, if you have a decentralized control structure and operations have strong connection, and operations will always be performed in the same order, so then you use steer because the responsibilities are shared. Then if you have a centralized control structure and uh, the operations can change order, and new operations are expected to be added as a result of your requirement, then you use form. So is that clear? So fork and uh, using fork or steer depends on the nature of the system, the control structure. So if the control structure is decentralized, then steer is better. If the control structure is centralized, then fork is better. Okay, then in the dynamic modeling, we should also dis distinguish two types of operations. So activity and uh, action. So activity uh, re refers to operations that takes time to complete. Then it associated with states. That action means instantaneous operation. It is associated with events because events take no time to complete. So action is associated with events and the states uh, last for a period, a period of time. So activity is associated with states. 
Now, as HR diagram relates events and states for one class, an uh, object model with several classes with interesting behavior has a set of state diagrams. Okay, so now let's summarize what we started today. So, uh, you know, in the um, for good heuristics, uh, what is the first column for a secret diagram? Actor. The first column is actor, the second column is boundary, boundary third. Control. control. Very good. So then um, the secret diagram can tell us the participating objects. And also besides partic participating objects, it can also tell us tell us what? So from the uh, missing classes. The, uh, from yeah, so missing classes uh, can be found from the partic participating objects. Then what else? Identify operations. Operations. It can also help us identify operations. Okay, then uh, the structure of the sequence diagram can be classified into two types. They are the structure of the sequence diagram or as a steer. Then when do you use fork? Decentralized. Fork is used in decentralized fork. Decentralized fork. Centralized or decentralized? Central, centralized. centralized, then uh, steer, decentralized. decentralized. Okay, all right, so, you know, this is the first class after spring break, so probably you guys need a little time <laughs> <laughs> to digest. Okay, so I'll stop here. Do you have any questions? So to help you improve your performance, besides, you know, the rule that if your final is greater than your midterm, and 50% of difference will be added to return. Now I will create an uh, additional bonus uh, quiz. You know, that quiz will be used to replace the worst quiz you have, uh, you have had. And uh, we will also have a bonus uh, assignment, which is used to replace the worst assignment you will have. So basically, you know, I have tried my best. Then you do that to try your best. Also, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.